very good afternoon. Welcome to BBC London. I'm Thomas McGill. First, this lunchtime, a council in North London is urging the government to talk to them about a derelict block of flats at Owens that used to be occupied by prison officers from Pentonville Prison. The block of 28 units has been empty for at least a decade. Now, campaigners say they could be used to help tackle the chronic shortage of homes in Islington. The Ministry of Justice says it's looking at the best option for taxpayers. Jim Weeble reports. For decades, these flats were once homes for Pentonville's prison officers, a few feet from the prison walls, a once vibrant estate now abandoned for years. Ministry of Justice, shame on you! For local housing campaigners, it makes little sense, with recent figures suggesting the government spent over £600,000 on a decade's worth of council tax for 28 empty flats. I've got a friend, she lives in the block next door. She's got her daughter and her two young children living with her. They could be living next door. They could be living in one of these empty flats. You know, they're facing, you know, the stress of overcrowding. You know, it gets fractious. Let's have a look. With 16,000 households on Islington's housing list, a solution has been a priority for the council. So as you can see, Jim, it's just, it's, it's really sad because it's been so neglected over the years. Um, these are actually uh, three and four bedroom homes. Now there's a dire shortage in Islington of uh, those large family size homes. You can see so much of it's boarded up. A deal in 2019 with the Ministry of Justice to turn the estate into short term lets faltered. But other plans have also been rejected by the council. So the government applied for planning permission for housing here in 2021 but the council refused it. The government didn't make a full planning application. They applied for a certificate of lawfulness. If the government would make a full planning application, and I would encourage them to do so, then under our tough planning regulations, 50% of these homes would have to be genuinely affordable homes. I would encourage the government to make a planning application, to come and talk to Islington Council about a planning application as soon as possible. So we got in touch with the Ministry of Justice and a spokesperson said to us an application to turn the site into new housing was turned down by Islington Council in 2021. So we are continuing to look for the best ways to use the property to get value for taxpayers. No more empty homes! Those protesting fear that value for the taxpayer will mean a sale to a developer and more luxury flats. But while the options continue to be analysed, human occupation at least still seems some way off. Jim Weeble, BBC London. Police are continuing to look for a man who went missing from hospital midway through treatment almost a week ago. Mohammed Maboub disappeared from Enfield. It's thought he attends music studios and has links to Brent Cross, Hackney and Bromley. Police say he should not be approached. London City Airport's plans to expand the number of flights has been rejected by Newham Council over concerns about noise. The airport wanted to extend its flights on Saturdays as well as make other changes. The proposals were part of its plans to increase passenger numbers from 6.5 million to 9 million. Now it's one of London's busiest railway stations and now London Waterloo is celebrating its 175th birthday this year. But what you may not know is that beneath the station is a maze of arches and alleyways dating back to its initial construction. Harry Lowe has been finding out about their colourful past. Calling at Vauxhall, Clapham Junction. It's 175 years since Waterloo Station was opened and we've come underground beneath the station to find out more about its history. OK, mind your heads, mind your underfeet conditions. Underneath the station is like a labyrinth that's, of course, totally unknown to anybody who uses Waterloo Station. And again, it's worth remembering that Waterloo is our busiest station in the United Kingdom. This world beneath Waterloo was used during World War I as air raid shelters. Later, British Rail employees made it their home as a place to unwind. This network of tunnels and arches and nooks and crannies, which historically have been used for lots of different reasons, very much as staff rooms, recreational facilities, during wartime storage, some people say for very important uh, documents. So we're going to go up here because we understand that there was a rifle range, a boxing ring, a gym, and even a snooker table. 
And as you can see, it is still in reasonable -ish condition. Although large parts of this have long since been abandoned, there's a chance it could be put to use again in future. Harry Lowe, BBC London. Now meet Chapman. He was born blind with a condition which affects his speech and learning. But it hasn't stopped him excelling as a pianist. Thanks to a buddy scheme by the charity Sense, he's been put in touch with a fellow musician keen to make sweet music. Fiona Lambden was with them when the pair met for the first time. Unbelievably, Chapman is just 13. All these thousands of notes are in his memory. He's blind, so he's unable to read music, so instead listens and then plays what he hears. Chapman started playing when he was just six. One day we took him to Disneyland, and then coming back home, we have this, you know, small toy piano at home. He, step, he, he start to type on you know, the piano and start to play the piece that he heard. Passing grade eight with distinction when he was 10. But due to his complex needs, Chapman has found it hard making friends. He couldn't, you know, make friends like the other children. They can make friends from the park. And research from the charity Sense has found people with complex disabilities are twice as likely to be lonely than non-disabled people. Hello. Hello. Who's there? What's, do you recognise my voice? So Chapman has been matched with Gabby in the hope of changing this. What's my name? Uh, Gabriella. Yeah! <laughs> this is the first time they've met in person. Up to now, it's always been online. He, he starts, you know, very being very talkative. And Chapman has inspired Gabby to start playing her flute again. She gave up eight years ago. What's it like actually to be in the same room playing together? It sounds really nice. It's a lot better and really annoyingly sometimes on the iPad, like I can't hear every single note, so our cues aren't always together. What's it like for you, Chapman? Is it good? Yeah. Do I need to practice to be able to play with you? Yeah, yeah he's like, you need to practice. <laughs> <laughs> And that takes us to the weather and Kate is in Wimbledon for us. Kate, how is it looking? Well, so far today, Thomas, we've managed to get away with the significantly showers. We've dodged them here at Wimbledon, but this afternoon it's likely we're going to get one or two. They're blowing in on the southwesterly breeze. It is a fairly gusty breeze as well. We've just had a couple of dollops of rather large raindrops here at Wimbledon. Nothing, like I say, though significant, but they're spreading through. And temperatures today getting up to around 23 Celsius. But we still, you can see, got these glorious sunny spells between the showers as well. Now, overnight tonight, those showers will start to fade. It'll become dry and largely clear. A bit fresher than last night. We had a humid night last night. Today, not so. The minimum dropping down to somewhere between 11 and 13 Celsius. But you can see after the clear skies, it's a bright start tomorrow morning. Lots of sunshine around so far during the morning itself. But gradually, very similar to today, we'll see the cloud edging in again on that southwesterly breeze. It stays breezy overnight, stays breezy tomorrow. And with that, we might just get one or two showers. Through the afternoon, they could be quite sharp. And the chances are you might just get a rumble or two of thunder. Temperatures tomorrow, again, a bit fresher, 21 Celsius. As we head through the rest of this week, a slightly drier day for Thursday, fewer showers, but Friday, it is looking rather wet and rather windy. Back to you, Thomas. Thanks, Kate. That's all from me. More on all of today's stories on the BBC News app, including more on London City Airport after its plans to expand were rejected by the council. We will be back here again at 6.30. Until then, have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.